Hey, Michael here, and today's video journal is all about rosettes. We're all familiar with rosettes, those round rings that surround the sound hole on our guitars. But what are they for? Well, there's three main purposes that a rosette serves. One is to prevent the top from cracking due to movement caused by temperature and humidity changes. And of course, it does provide a decorative border around the sound hole, some of which can be quite elaborate. It also helps to stiffen the top at the sound hole, which is where the sound port, if you will, of the guitar is. Some classical guitar rosettes can be very ornate in their coloration and their makeup of the small little pieces of veneer wood that they're inlaid with. The construction of which is beyond the scope of this particular video journal. But this picture here, you can easily see the little bitty pieces of wood that were once strips of colored veneers that were glued together and then cut off into little mosaic tiles. The guitar rosette derives its name from early decorative carvings that were used in architecture, monuments, sculptures, and many other various ornamental applications. A rosette is basically a stylized pattern that resembles the circular formation of leaves around the flower. Rosettes were being made 5,000 years ago in Mesopotamia and were common in ancient Egypt, Minoan Crete, and ancient Greece. Those square pieces of molding with carved circular relief patterns inside doors and window corners, and even the decorative plate around a doorknob spindle fits into, are simplified descendants of that prehistoric rosette. In the 17th century, the five course guitar had sound holes that were decorated, either with wood that was cut out in a delicate pattern and inlaid into the sound hole itself, or with several layers of delicately cut parchment covering the sound hole. It's easy to see where the early luthiers may have gotten their inspiration for the rosettes that they used in their instruments. One only has to look at the windows in early cathedrals. Visiting one of these cathedrals, you'll see a dramatic circular stained glass window dominating one or more of the walls. This type of window is called a rose window, referring to the fact that it's made up of a series of smaller windows radiating out from the center like flower petals. The rose window of Florence Cathedral in Florence, Italy, is a good example of such a window. It was begun in 1296 in the Gothic style and was structurally completed in 1436. Plenty of time for the luthiers in the 15th and 16th centuries to gleam some inspiration from its beauty. And now for how I do my rosette. Good morning, Michael here. We are today making uh, sound hole rosettes for the next few builds I'll be working on. So, let me show you what we got. First thing we do, of course, is design the, the rosette and take the pieces and cut them out. Obviously, that was very quickly. So, these are the inserts. This is made out of curly koa here. This one will either have a uh, star, I mean, a cross or a leaf design on it. And then we have the side pieces. these um, are cut with tabs so I'll have to take all these out and clean them up and when I do will give us a very thin rosewood outside and then 
central pieces. These are about 1 16th of an inch wide. So once we get the pieces like this, we carefully sand them and hope that they fit together. the way they're supposed to. And lay it in the guitar. Starting six different guitars, so I need six different rosettes. Here's some other ones. Curly Koa. This one is Spalted Maple. And this final one is uh, Ambrosia Maple. These will go, of course, in the tops. And these have not been final sanded or anything. They'll be final sanded down once they're inlaid into the better here. Okay, this is a Sitka Spruce top. First thing I want to do is kind of get the position of the body on here so I can get an idea of where I'm at. So lightly with this white chalk pencil, we'll trace the outline. Spruce. This is a real nice straight grained piece of spruce and when I glued it up I offset it just a little bit so I could tell exactly where my center line was. But it's really hard sometimes to figure out where the center line is because the straight grain that spruce just lines up so easily with itself. So lightly through there and through here. Just want to mark the center line. Now in the center of the sound hole on this guitar. Five and thirteen sixteenths of an inch back from the very top. So I'm going to measure back down my center line five and thirteen sixteenths and place a mark. So five, I'm going to make a five and thirteen sixteenths. So there's my center line. All right, so there's center mark. For the center of the sound hole, that's where we twice, cut once, five and thirteen sixteenths, okay. Okay, now we take it over to the CNC.
after cutting the rosette channel and just a little bit of cleanup this is what it looks like the channel is 55 thousandths of an inch deep a little over th three sixteenths <laughs> This is a cedar top with a spalted maple and rosewood rosette. It needs to be sanded flush with the top and then the top.
All right, after a few passes to get the inlay of the rosette flush with the top, it's time to measure and see where we are as far as the thickness goes. And we're right at 3.4 millimeters. get down to at least three millimeters. So what we'll do is we'll, uh, since we've got the, the face where we want it to be, we'll turn it over and take some off. That's it for this video journal. From here I'll select two of those tops and match up some backs and sides with them and take two guitars to completion. Six is a bit much to work on all at once. Next we'll be working on backs. Thanks for watching this video and if you like it please hit the subscription button and the notification button.